is your relationship with time? Are you wired and tired, stressed and overwhelmed, busy and going nowhere, or just want to scale your business? Welcome to Take Back Time with your host, Penny Zenker. Penny focuses on books, strategies, tools, and tips to help you work smarter and approach your time more strategically. As a result, you can have more energy, focus, and get more done in less time. Be more efficient and effective. Get ready to take back time. Hello, and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker, and I'm your host. And we are talking about overwhelm and overload today and the power of focus. And I think that everyone that I've talked to in the past at least year is feeling some sense of overwhelm, overload, there's less resources, more to do, and people are feeling the pressure and the numbers of people who are feeling burnout are going up as well. So I'm excited today to have Peter Schroeder with me because we're looking for experts who are going to give you a new twist that are going to help you with the way that you're feeling so that you can get out of feeling stuck, get out of that place of overwhelm and take yourself to a place where you can really leverage off of the power of a focus. And he is an award-winning DJ, Mm -hmm. an entrepreneur who started uh, Telzio. It's a company that's changing the way that we work and how we communicate. So with over two decades of experience, he's teamed up with big names like Facebook, Samsung, and Airbnb. And he's earned more than 20 platinum records, four gold records, and received three nominations for Danish DJ awards. You'll notice he has an accent. And even after facing challenges like surviving a plane crash, his passion and determination continue to inspire. So without further ado, Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm trying to see the connection between the DJ and the music world, and then what you're doing today around focus. Uh, Help us to understand how did one flow into the other? Well, so I think my whole life I've had two parallel careers, even since I was a kid. I've always been a major nerd, started coding when I was six years old and I got my first computer, I was more interested in that than playing video games. My mom was an engineer and both my parents were musicians. My dad was out playing gigs every weekend when I was a kid and my mom was a pianist, a very, very good one. So I've always had this parallel thing going on where on one hand, technology, I made my first website when I was 14 uh, back in (laughs) 1998. launched it and, and actually sold it as a real company when I was 18. And Press it. Yeah, at the same time, started making music and, and DJing when I was in my teenage years and found out that that was where I wanted to go. But even while I was in the music industry, I was still coding stuff. I would be making, you know, I had a record label at some point. I create all, all the software for the releases, managing the releases and the promotion and royalties and all these kind of things. It's a curse. I mean, I it was is. in application <laughs> development one time and it's like, I can't help but feel like to get involved in something like that. So I think it's inside you and you can't help but do it, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. Like I found out a few years ago and really just a few years ago, it's not more than two, three, four years ago, that I have raging ADD. And when I was a kid, that wasn't a term that, you Mm -hmm. know, we had just heard about ADHD and that's the kids that run backwards up the walls and cats and still, but that's not me. I didn't have problems with that. I was more just, you know, focus on things I'm not interested in. That's hard, but... On the other hand, focus on things that I am interested in. Well, I can go for, for three, four days without sleep and just get right. really good at that, right? So for me, it's a superpower because now I know what it is and how to deal with it. And once you do, then it is a superpower. But that's definitely something that I had to learn over the years. And being in my early 20s and being uh, in the music industry and, and, and touring and running a record label and not knowing how to handle this, that definitely cause some trouble along the way. And I burned some bridges and those kind of things because when you have ADD and especially severe ADD, you you want to do everything. You want to please everyone, but you also want to be part of everything you think is interesting and you can't. So So let's go from there, right? Is Mm because we want to talk about overwhelm. And I think that's part of where people feel overwhelmed because I think people confuse overload and overwhelm, right? One is emotional and one is capacity. So the need to please, the need to be involved in everything. Like, how do you approach and help people to understand the difference and recognize which one they're in? And then yeah, also so, some techniques to get out of that space. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I would say for me personally, especially when I had a record label, that 
added up, of course, a lot of work. It was my first real business, like a real business. And all of a sudden I had responsibilities and these kind of things. I had signed artists that were expecting releases to come out and so their career can move forward. And at the same time, you get all these ideas for things you want to do and all the things you could do. And then learning how to sort those out, basically kill your darlings, that whole thing where you mm. say, okay, I love this, but I can't, I have, don't have capacity physically. Yeah, basically the capacity to get everything done. Once you kind of understand how to weed it and learn how to say no, that's really the, where it starts. Learn how to say no when people ask you to do a favor or, or because you just want to help them and you know you can help them. You know you're good at it and you know you can contribute and make their lives better. You want to do it. But learning how to say no to that, that's hard. Okay, so do how do we do that? that? Let's talk about that because that's a really big thing. So how does somebody who wants to please everybody and wants to help, how do they say no? So that's difficult because you think you're the only one who can do this. You think you're the only one that can help. And that's a very typical thing for, it's in the back of your mind, but you're not. Like they will figure it out. Mm. They'll ask someone else or they'll figure it out to themselves. They, you're not the only one that can save the world. And you got to really get that in your head. Once so it's that holding that understanding that we are yeah. not the only solution, that they won't be desolate and they're not, they'll find another solution. So it's holding yeah. that space for that. I think so. Yeah, I think so. What and, else? And once you kind of get past that, once you get past that, then you'll be able to at least free up some more of your own space. But the problem is the more you say yes to and the more you don't get done, one thing is, yeah, you will probably burn some bridges along the way. I did that when I don't follow through because mm -hmm. it's actually worse to say yes to something and not do it than it is to say no in the beginning. You got to remember Absolutely. that. So you start bringing bridges. And the thing is that becomes an emotional overwhelm by itself. Once you start, because you really want to get this done and you are so eager and you know you can do a good job, you feel like I'm the only one that can do it and I will help that person. That it keeps spinning in your head, but that becomes overwhelmed because you are all of a sudden not getting these things done. And you are, yeah, lacking pine and people start doing the exact opposite of what you want. So they start not liking you. Mm. Well, and you're also feeling bad about yourself, right? Because you're not right. now consistent with your own definition of yourself, right? That you want to right. be respected and trusted and deliver something as you've promised and so forth. So that just sends you down a bad path as well. So it's recognizing someone else can do it and understanding that there is a cost to not delivering. Yeah. And I think reminding yourself exactly the cost to not delivering, remind yourself that if you don't get this done, it's worse than saying no. That's really the key. And if you really ask yourself, am I going to get this done? Am I going to be able to, because I have so many other things on my plate? That's what I was just going to ask you. you. Yeah. Do you say, what's the percentage? What's the chance that I don't right. get this done? And if yeah, there's any I, I, chance, I, I, then you I don't look do at it. myself essentially. Yeah. I literally look at myself and say, Hey, realistically, what are the chances that I'm going to get this done on time with everything? What else do I have going on? What else have I promised someone to do right now that I haven't done yet? Maybe I should get that done first and then say, sure. maybe ask me again next week or say, sorry, I, I'm just like completely, I usually just say, I have too much on my plate right now. I would love to help you. And people respect that. It's a weird thing because we tend to get this idea in, your, in our heads that people will hate us if we say no to helping them, but they don't. They respect that. And at least in, in every example that I've had where I've said no to something, they, they respect and it's fair. Yeah. Absolutely. So what happens though, if let's say they're not an entrepreneur like you are and they're somewhere where their boss is telling them that they have to do it. And so they don't see an option to say no, but they're already at capacity and feeling overwhelmed. What do you do then? Sit down and cry. No, that, that's... <laughs> That's obviously very difficult, but it really depends on the kind of workplace you're in. If you have an HR, that's what you do. You go to HR and you, you say, hey, I'm completely stretched. And then you look at yourself as well. Am I doing things efficiently? Like, am I actually getting these things done that are priorities? Am I understanding what the boss is telling me that are the priorities? Is the thing I'm working on right now that I think I need to get done, is that actually what needs to be done or is it something else? Because at the end of the day, your boss wants certain things done and it's never wrong to ask questions. You can always ask like, what should I focus on? Because I have a lot right now. And I'm sure that your boss would appreciate that more than <laughs> hate you for saying that. They would actually like to hear, hey, I, I have a lot right now. So can you help me prioritize? What do you think yeah. I should do first? That's, absolutely. Maybe you can absolutely break some of those tasks down into smaller pieces so that you can do the pieces that are actually mm -hmm. more urgent than others. Or yeah. maybe the boss doesn't remember all the things that you have going on, or maybe you have multiple people who are giving you things. And sometimes we do need to ask for help. So nothing wrong with that. 
Nothing wrong at all. And actually, I would say, having employees myself, I love when I'm asked questions about certain things because that shows one that they are actually listening to what it is that I'm asking, and they want to clarify and do a good job at it. And the other hand, if if someone says that, hey, I'm completely maxed out, I'm stressed out, what can we do? Well, then we look down and say, okay, but what tasks do you have? And it's absolutely fair. I have never experienced anyone doing anything, like getting any backslash on that on that. That's, I think, just something that people don't really dare to do because they feel like that's frowned upon or they feel like that's a weakness in the eyes of their boss. Right. But it's not. It's the exact opposite. Absolutely. Any other tips or tricks that you would suggest for people who are feeling overwhelmed? Yeah, like a very tangible one that my mom had always told me is just go to bed and sleep and you'll wake up tomorrow and there's a new day. I use that all the time. Not all the time because then it would be every day. But really, if I'm overwhelmed by something or if there's something that's bothering me or if I'm stressed out about something, then I go to bed and I get a good night's sleep go to bed early and make sure that I'm rested and the next day you'll have fresh eyes and you'll look at things differently and you can tackle it. But once you're in it, you're probably not going to get anywhere with it. So get some rest. It's easy to get lost in something and you have to step away, right? In some shape or form, whether it's go to sleep, whether it's take a walk or take a shower or there are a lot of different activities putting yourself into action, but stepping away from whatever it is, is absolutely necessary. I do that all the time. Is yeah. I just feel like, okay, I got to step away from this. I got to do something else, read a book. Somebody today I was talking to, they said they go to the movies by themselves during the day. Like they just go see a movie and that helps to sort of take them out of whatever it is. And they come back, like you said, with fresh eyes. Yeah, and exactly. And then all of a sudden you have a solution to whatever it is that you didn't think about before. But you can't see that. You can't see the forest for trees, right? Because... You're so focused on whatever solution you're thinking is, and that's not working. And then you just keep getting spiraled down in that rabbit hole. But yeah, get some fresh eyes on it. And then I feel like the other thing I tell myself a lot is this, I saw a long time ago, this solution solving schema kind of thing, where it's, if you have a problem, yes or no, can you fix it? Yes or no? Uh, If it says yes, then okay, don't worry about it. If you can fix it, you can fix it. Don't worry, then go fix it. Uh, mm-hmm. that's, it's really that simple. If you can't fix it, well, then don't worry about it because you can't fix it. Then there's no reason to worry about it. Just then deal with that part, right? Like deal with not worrying about it. But if you honestly think there's no solution to it, then there's no reason to worry about it. Right. If it's yeah. outside of your control is what you're saying. Because yeah. maybe you yeah. could find out who can fix it. Is is there someone else that there's, can fix it, right? But it right, right, right. sends you but it's not yours in to a worry series about. of questions, right? That's what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. So just remember... Worrying is really just an extra layer of energy that you tack on to yourself that you need to get through. If you can fix something, go fix it and do that and like figure out how to fix it or act on it. There's no reason to sit down and worry about it. But if you can't fix it, if it's out of your hands, then there's no reason to worry about it either. So don't worry. Don't worry. Be happy. So can you really do that, though? Like, yeah. I tend to be a worrier. I also follow the philosophy of it's outside of my control. And I think that if it's really outside of my control, I'm better at letting it go. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like personal or emotional types of issues, like relationships, I don't know that it sort of gets inside me. Like, can you really do really like just don't worry and you just let everything go? I kind of do. My wife says the same as you. And she says, not everyone can do that. And I totally understand that everyone's different, but Mm -hmm. I'm able to literally say, I'm not going to worry. I, I know I can fix it, so I'm going to put my energy into fixing it. And it's really rare, like you say yourself, that there's something that's not out of your control or that you can't do something about. Mm-hmm. So it's rare that you go over to the other end. But if you do, then, well, then there's also no need to worry. But in 99% of the chances, you can do something. So mm-hmm. it's just about identifying that. What is it that I can do? And then act on that instead of just sitting down and be passive. Yeah. I recently heard from someone and I thought this was a good way to do it. If if you know that you have a tendency to worry or to hold on to things is to set a time limit and say, OK, I'm going to give myself this 30 minutes and I'm going to allow myself to worry and to go down the rabbit hole. And But after that's done, it's time to either let go because I can't control it or to take the action that I need to take to make sure that I get on with getting what direction I need. So they give themselves that. 30 minute pity party, and then they move on. So I think that's also helpful, right? Because sometimes we need to feel it. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And we need to like freak out as long as you're not freaking out on someone, right? 
<laughs> mm-hmm. No, no, it's, it's spot on, and, and I totally agree. And I understand that, yes, there needs to be that, I don't know what you can call it, but this little buffer where you are allowed to have emotions. Uh, not everyone can be stone-hearted like me, like my wife says. <laughs> 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 but, like, I have a good friend, Will Henschel, he says his motto is, before you act, be calm, be still. Mm-hmm. And I think that is really good. It's something that I've been practicing because I have a tendency to act right away when there's something that either bothers me or I try to fix things right away. And and mm. sometimes you really do need that little buffer. You need that to sit down, lean back, think about this for a day, depending on what it is, or for an hour, for five minutes. But be still. Just Yeah, I like that. That comes into right now I'm writing a book about reset moments. And mm. a reset moment is just that. It's a moment to a purposeful pause to step back and get perspective on the situation before you take action and realign. So that's something I do practice as well. I think it's really good. It's something I'm bad at and I wish I was better because it is really, I mean, I've started reminding myself doing and especially in a business, instead of replying to an email right away where I'm like pissed about something that's uh, going wrong or someone's, uh, yeah, I wait a day and Mm -hmm. by waiting a day, you actually have mm. the upper hand all of a sudden. Like it completely changes the dynamic in whatever. Kind of, try it if you're not used to it. <laughs> it's, it's funny how everything changes if you take time before mm-hmm. you, all of a sudden they start doubting themselves or whatever it is. Of course, it depends on the situation, but it's a really good advice that I like to follow. Yeah, that's a good one. So it's true because you see things differently in the day, right? You've had a chance to go to sleep and practice what you said earlier. So by the way, you're not stone hearted because <laughs> you do get upset if you get an email yeah. like that, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And you know how you've been in an argument and you walk away and, oh, I should have said that. Mm. You know that feeling, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, I just wish I'd said that. That would have been great. That's what you allow yourself to do if you wait. So you get mm. that upper hand. You get to think about it before you just react. Right. It's hard, Absolutely. but it's a good one to practice. For sure. So we're coming to the end of the show. People only have so much attention span. But when we talk about focus... Right. Mm -hmm. So saying no and having strategies to let go of what we can't control and things like that. What other key things would you want to share before we sign off here that is something that you cherish? Well, so being one with severe ADD, I get distracted by anything, little smells, little, I mean, literally anything. I ended up buying a vacation home in Denmark that I can travel to and sit in isolation in in a forest to get stuff done. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I really need to get things done. I will say it varies obviously a lot from person to person. And also when you have a diagnosis that prevention for these things is of course is harder. But for me, when I wrote the first version of Telsio, the this, this software for our company, that was while I was waiting for my visa to come through to travel to America. I just met my wife back then and I was going to travel here and, and live here. But I had sold all my things in Copenhagen and put everything in storage and moved up to my dad in Northern Denmark and was sleeping on his couch while I was waiting for this visa to come through. And it took three months, luckily for me, because I was up there, there was nothing around me, and my dad was away on work every day, and my wife was in America, so there was a time difference of nine hours. So while I was up in the daytime, she was sleeping. So I had no distraction. That was just literally just me. There was nothing on TV. There was just nothing. And sometimes you really need that to get done. But even with that, I had a hard time focusing and getting that code written. The fun thing about writing software is like getting the ideas and coming up with all the, what is that we're going to build and what the architecture behind it. But actually writing the code and typing out the code is maybe not that fun. It's really just stuff that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. So I had to just literally whip myself every day and just tell him, Peter, come on, you can do like 20 more minutes. You can write this, finish this function right now. Like literally tell it, say it out loud, remind myself. Mm-hmm. And, and I was literally saying it out loud to myself many times a day because Otherwise, I would just fall into something else or start Googling something. And I would never have had the company today if I hadn't done that. I Mm. knew at that time in my life that I was over the music industry. I was burned out by that. So I need to do something else. And if this idea that I had, which seemed profitable and seemed like a good idea, if that's ever going to come to fruition, I have to finish something and get it done. So it's really, yeah, isolation and then whip yourself to get it done and get stuff done. So do you talk to yourself in the third person? So you say, Peter, you got to do this. Because it's interesting, right? Because then it's almost like it's your friend that's telling Mm -hmm. you, you can do this, right? So I'm wondering if there's anything to that, like speaking to yourself in third person. I don't know. It's not something that I've ever done a lot in my life. But in that particular moment where I knew that this was kind of a change in my life, and I knew that if this was actually going to work, I have to get this code written. I had to put something out there. Mm -hmm. Because an idea is not 
an idea. Of, well, it will stay an idea. A business is not a business until it, you know, actually put something out. Like everyone right. can get ideas, right? Right. So I knew that this shouldn't end up like so many other things I've done in my life, where I get an idea and I start working on something, and then it doesn't. It gets half done, right? Right. So I had to sit down and really just tell me, and I did talk to myself in third person. Peter, you can do this. Come on. Like just finish this method, and then I kept going that, and then all of a right. sudden the whole day had gone. Right. I have a new theory now that when we talk to ourselves in third person, it's our cheerleader, it's mm -hmm. our friend. And yeah. when we talk to ourselves and put ourselves down, it's in the eye, right? And, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have this new theory. I'm going to pay attention now to my own inner voice and see if that comes up like that. Because I was in a time where if I didn't take action, I could have died in the situation. And I spoke to myself in third person. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. like thinking about that. Like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, it is actually interesting because it's, like I said, it's not something I've really done before in my life. And it's not really after many times, maybe huh? uh, not many times, but it definitely worked. I mean, I was literally sitting there just writing, typing away. And all of a sudden I had a full solution that I've bigger than anything I've ever been built before. And yeah, Fantastic. it worked. There's something to it. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll <laughs> dive deeper into that. So tell us where we can find you and your software program so that people yeah. can connect with you. So myself directly, if you want to reach out to me, petersroder.com. There's links to all my social media, my email address and everything. And if you want to try out Telsio, which is a business phone service, we have done a good job at building something that's easy to use and works for businesses of all sizes. We have companies with two employees and companies with 5,000. We have like Facebook and Google and Airbnb, Samsung and companies like that as our customers. Go try it out. There's a free trial and reach out to our team. We are yeah, doing a good job and very friendly people. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing uh, bits of your wisdom. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. That was fun. And thank you all for listening. We got some really good tips and maybe you've heard before, just say no. But I think we got some nuances in there that were powerful in the ways that you can say no. We also talked about ways that you can approach things with fresh eyes. And at the end there, I think that was kind of interesting is I think that if you speak to yourself in third person and you're your own cheerleader, that you can actually be more focused and handle some of this overwhelmed by saying to yourself, Penny, you've got this. Penny, get focused and get this done. So try it out. Who knows? Thank you for being here. My name is Penny Zanker and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening. Today's topic is another opportunity for you to put the knowledge you learned into practice. Tune in again next week for more strategies that will help you have more energy and focus to get more done in less time so you can continue to take back time.